This book here is, as you can see, it's called The Mysteries of Human Reproduction. And it's an out of print book. And it's by a doctor called Dr. Raymond Bernard of Columbia University. And he has a, a PhD as well as an MA and it's the scientific evidence that women can produce a child without a father completely upsetting the age-old idea that the male is essential for procreation so I thought this was an interesting enough subject that we could um, talk about in some detail See if you can get a copy of this book, PDF, um, free online from some website or another. Or email me and I can um, get you copies. <clears throat> so, um, so, what's interesting about this is that according to the, the doctors, um, from various medical establishments and British doctors they, they heard about several cases where females were apparently pregnant and they hadn't had penetrative sex so they, they took them they, they, they took them into the hospital and they examined them over a period of time to and they found out, for instance, um, certain anomalies, which would be a, a, an, only an anomaly because then they were actually pregnant, was that um, some of the, the women were, were in fact virgins. So their, um, their hymen was actually intact. So what the doctors couldn't understand at the time was how the females were pregnant without sexual intercourse without the semen which at that time they believed had to fertilize the egg because the egg has the um, X chromosome and the, and, and the male sperm has an X and Y chromosome so you know it's one of these mysteries that they termed um, pathionogenesis which is the ability to females to procreate without the aid of the male, for instance. And females that have been known to do this only give birth to females because it's a simple fact that females have the X chromosome or XX chromosome. They haven't got the Y chromosome. That's why they only give birth to females because that um, what they call pathogenesis means that the females self-fertilize themselves without um, the semen from, from a male. So that's why there's an absence of um, the Y chromosome. And also, if you look at a Y, a y chromosome, there's um, missing, a missing DNA strand. Now, if you added on that DNA strand, then that Y would in fact become an X. So they say that there's 2.8% DNA, um, DNA missing from the Y chromosome that would in fact make it into an X. You know, so what happened is that they researched um, a lot of ancient stories um, from indigenous tribes around the world and they found that there was lots of evidence that correlated their scientific findings which in fact showed that females were able to give birth without having um, penetrative sex so that's called the, the mysteries of, of human um, reproduction 
as far as um, as far as this goes. So it's a very very interesting book, which you can actually get online. I do recommend that you do get these books and have and, and have a read because these books actually were were were. were part of the research papers of research institutes and most of the doctors who wrote these books or who or who researched these topics have actually passed away now um, so you know you need to look into this research it yourself there are a few um, news items that you can find on various um, internet um, search engines which do um, have information on females that have actually given birth. And there's also a gland which the females have, which is, my memory serves me right, it's actually called the blue boo gland, which is a gland that females have, and they, during sexual excitement, they actually release a kind of milky, milky fluid which can be quite milky or it can be quite, quite clear. And that gland is called the blue boo gland. So it's very interesting. So we're gonna do a part, a part one on this subject here. Part one on um, pathogenesis. And we're gonna move on now to another subject. So remember, mysteries of human reproduction. These beings that are called greys and reptilians are by now known by millions of people. When I say known, they, they know of them, they've heard of them and they've, they've read of them and, and they've seen images and on YouTube even and there's some images of, of these beings that have been captured. Um, which some say are authentic and some say are not authentic. So it's a, just a question of opinion and researching so you can come to a decision yourself. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little about um, these gray beings. And also recently there was a story that appeared in the news, mainstream news for want of a better word, because what happens is that if a news item does not appear on mainstream news like Sky, um, BBC, CNN, Fox News, then it's not actually seen as a fact, as factual information by the masses. They're waiting for the corporations to tell them what is a fact and what is not a fact, basically, rather than relying on their own research. Um, and then come into a, their own opinion, informed opinion, because it's informed once you've taken the time to research the subject matter. And the reason I was talking about mainstream news, and I'm slightly digressed off that topic, was that recently sci scientists are now saying that the moon was once part of the earth. And it actually... Um, splintered off, if you will, several um, million years ago. So, which is that? That is some information that we've been saying for um, a very, a very long time, decades even. In, in if you read the right scrolls, etc., um, you know it clearly tells you in the in the scrolls that. The moon was once part of the earth and also there was another planet that was um, part of the earth also. 
and that planet was inhabited by these beings called um, the Maldekians, if you will, who would have a similar um, look to this. And these beings called the Maldekians, they, they are a semi-amphibious semi race of beings. Having said semi-amphibious, semi we all are because human beings, they, they're, we're composed of between 70 to 75 percent water and clearly we love water we love swimming in the water we love having a shower and everyone who showers you know they feel refreshed after immersing themselves in in, in the water so we are semi amphibious as well that's why if you look at if you look at my palm you know you can see you know skin here the skin in between our palms you know which in fact is web is web like so you could imagine this skin took up a larger space there'd be a quite a, a, a large web here in between our fingers because we're naturally semi um, semi amphibious and there's no surprise there bearing in mind we're living on a planet that is 75 percent water so it's more like an aquarium, if you will, with rocks protruding through, through, the, through, through the water line. So these beings, these greys, they've been interacting with humanity for eons. Millions of years, in, millions of years in fact. It's nothing new. Some of these beings here are, in a sense, you could say that they're friendly towards humanity. Um, those beings would be called the Romadians. And then you have the other ones, the Maldekians and other species of greys, um, Zeta um, Recticula, um, a star, a star constellation. Some of these beings, known as the Draconians, they're not so um, happy with humanity. They don't actually. They just see us as a kind of a pest, really. You know, and some actually say that some of these beings actually harvest mankind. When I say harvest, you know. What, what is told as far as the information, um, even if you research it yourself, you'll find that um, mankind is actually part of the food chain, whereas in humanity, they think they're actually on top of the food chain, when in fact, they're actually part of the food chain, that, meaning that they're utilized as a food source by other beings that are able to oppress oppress the humans and farm the humans if you will the same way we farm goats we farm chickens we farm cows because as far as we're concerned they're just food you know it's the same way some of these beings see human beings they see human beings as food and that's why there's certain movies that you see that show how humanity is actually utilized by these beings. Whereas in some are used as a, um, for food, some are used because of the, the blood, the, um, the blood type. So it's very interesting um, information here. I'll just have a quick read of this. This is called um, the Greys. There are over 70 different species of greys. The greys are really a crossbreed between humans and reptilian species. The greys are being used as slaves by the reptilians. The most common species are the Romadians, who are benevolent. The Reculian Narians, the Maccabeans. The Romadians are biological entities grafted from various extraterrestrial species. They served one purpose and that was explorers and worthy servants. They were used by the Anunnaki or um, the Neteru 
for the pub for, for various purposes. You know, so as far as the skeptics are concerned, you know, if there's been like hundreds of thousands of sightings of these beings, you know, over the years, then we have to give it um, close scrutiny. Surely everybody wasn't fantasizing or hallucinating or just making it up because to be honest you know the value of actually saying that you've saw these beings etc you know it's not actually going to do you any um going to help you in the popularity charts because people will just think that you're cuckoo do you understand so that that is just the way it's it's it, it's seen as but what's interesting is that the news are saying that the moon was once part of the Earth and there was another planet here as well that, has, that was part of a collision that happened many millions and millions of years ago. You know, so in a roundabout way, you know, the scientists are actually saying that, you know, there's more to our solar system than actually meets the eye. So, you know, we just have to wait and see and what other information they release and you know we'll just take it from there but this is just a very very brief talk about these beings called the greys and also the greys um, apparently that that there's a relation to the dolphins not just in skin tone because some of the greys have a very similar skin tone to to the um, to the dolphins and vice versa. But also, as far as I can recall, the actual word dolphin has got a link into the word womb. And if you know if you know anything about dolphins, if you've if you've studied dolphins. You know that dolphins are clearly highly intelligent and it's known that dolphins have a way of beaming a, um, a psionic wave that actually stuns the prey like fish for instance and maybe predators and it's powerful enough to rupture um, the internal organs of, of fishes and, and sharks by this sonic um, wave that emits from the dolphins foreheads so it causes internal 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 bleeding or totally stuns the fish more like an electric jolt so to speak and then they just grab it and eat it or escape from enemies so there's definitely a link between um, the dolphin the dolphin species and these greys these reptilian species as well so that concludes this first part of this chapter that we're going to be talking about. We will cover it again in more detail with more, more interesting information on this. So thank you very much for, um, for listening. And your comments and emails are always welcome because we've had a lot of emails, you know, people emailing us, asking us for more information, etc. Once again, thank you very, very much, Mad Mantis TV.